Welcome back everyone, Miranda Patron here with you to do this awesome shamrock. I'm starting in the center with some PBO, which is a fun paint to check out, definitely has awesome effects. This one is the PBO Moon, and it is the emerald color. So I just traced a circle to give myself a guide, and I just poured it around into the circle. So I'm going to be using brushes for this video. This is light lime and I am just delineating a section here down on the handle. Now this shamrock is about 12 inches by 12 inches. So if you're doing this design, just give yourself 12 inches if you want to create the same size design. So this is the Deco Art Light Lime. And I'm just dotting some of the sides here. We're going to do it with a fill afterwards. For the bigger dots, you just push down a little harder, and as you get out towards the edge, it's lighter on the brush. All right, back with the light lime here, and I'm just kind of sectioning off. So think of each one of these as a heart, so like it would be the bottom point of the heart. Now I'm just going to fill in here with some of the Soft Jade, which is one of the multi-surface satins from Americana. And I'm just going to go all the way around that PBO center. Let's do another row of that here on the sides. Okay, now I'm switching over to apple green. We're going to do a few rows of that after the jade. And I'm just pushing down a little bit harder to go a little bit larger with the dots. So the first ones were smaller, this is just a touch bigger, and I'm going to get a little bit larger as we work our way out. Now this type of dotting too, you guys can use your dot dotting styluses for. I'm probably about the one millimeter, one and a half millimeter size. Now one thing I wanted to mention is this shamrock is like off-centered. It's not symmetrical, so there's some spacing adjustments that I had to kind of a lot for, which just make it a unique piece, right? So we have three rows of apple on either side, and now I'm using a size 3 round brush. And I'm just painting dots, there's no trick with the brush, and it's literally just painting circles. They're not cut, they're not glued, there's no nothing like that to the brushes. Okay, next step is um, that I've been using is bright green. Like I said, for the spacing, you're just going to have to tuck some in on the sides. Just because we're creating a mandala in the silhouette space of the shamrock. And this one, actually, I messed up my spacing, blacked over it, going to fix it. There we go. All right. Next up is this teal mint. And again, I'm just using the size 3 round brush. If you get brushes that are softer, you know, a lot of you are concerned that they have a point, but it, it doesn't matter. If you can see, it's still, it'll make a circle. You just paint it into a circle. Squirrel. Squirrel is a good brush. Um, hair to use. There's also a lot of synthetic ones that are pretty nice. Alright, so I'm back to the angle spot detailer now and I'm just tucking some teal mint dots in between the larger ones of the teal mint that we just put down. 
Next up I have um, bluegrass green. We're just going to go a little bit bigger. Not much. So at this point if you were using dotting styluses it's a little bit larger than the three millimeter ball on the dotting styluses. And those you can do this with too. Just push the paint around into a larger circle. Okay, and just like we did with the mint, I'm going to tuck some of the bluegrass green smaller dots in between each of those just to kind of fill in some of our negative space. Alright, so I'm just using my etcher now to just kind of tuck some S curls in here just to give it a size, um, just to give me an idea of where the size would be, how far out. So they are about an inch each in length. And that way too I don't have to erase anything. I just paint them in and when I gloss over it with the varnish then the lines go away. It's very handy. I find sometimes sketching them out is a little bit easier to make sure your spacing is correct before you start laying down paint. And then I just start in the middle of each S and work my way to the outer edge so the dots in the center are a little bit larger and then it looks a little more elegant as you get to the edges of the S curl. And then one more. And these are a nice little elegant piece to put in there to just help delineate some negative space too. So, Alright, now we're using white and I'm using the angle spot detailer to just kind of put a little kind of leafy element in here. So the top part was just a little petal and then I'm basically just doing curved swipes down into an imaginary stem, if you will. So push down hard at the beginning and then let up lightly to make the tail. And then just a couple little unattached ones there. And then we're going to curl up on the outside. Really I'm just kind of winging this because I wanted something to spill, fill this diamond space um, that was different than dots. And we'll just tuck a few dots in there, help it out a little. All right, back to bright green. And using the angle spot detailer, I'm just painting about, I don't know, just under a three millimeter circle at the top of each of our curls. And then we're going to dot with the light lime two rings around each of the bright greens.
And at the top dot of each one, I'm just pushing down a little harder to make it a little bit bigger because it's going to start to give us um, a point at the top of this element. So it looks more like a petal rather just than a bulb of circles. Okay, so now we have two of the light lime around it, and then we're going to start in with the bluegrass green here, and we're going to do a couple of rings of that one around each. So if you do make a mistake that you just had, you can wipe it with a dry brush a couple of times, a little bit of water, and it comes right off. If you didn't catch it in time, you can always just paint black over it, but I caught it in time and just used a flat brush just to kind of whip that one off of there. It was out of line. And again, each top dot that you're starting with is a little bit bigger, so it's kind of coming to the, a point. This is a little sped up because I was asked by y'all to put out some of these videos in a little bit of a faster fashion, and especially seeing as this one was three hours long about for the full version, and now it's about 40 for this. <laughs> um, it's a little bit different. So I wanted to say each time I'm putting down a dot, I'm just kind of wiggling the brush a little bit. So if it's the smaller ones, you're just really just painting a circle. Even though this kind of brush comes to a point, you're just kind of pushing the bristles, bristles, the bristles, the bristles around in a circle. And it does take a little bit of practice. I'm not gonna lie, it's a challenge. But if you're looking to use brushes, then that's a little point. So this is the bright green. And again, we're just doing two rows of that around each of the blue grass greens.
Okay. And then two rings of the bright green around this side as well. Now you can really see, because we put a bigger dot at the top of each one of these, it really came to that nice kind of petal point. Alright. Alright, so I'm back with the blue grass green and we're back down at the handle of our shamrock here. I'm just randomly filling it. So big dots, little dots, all in each side, the left and the right of that little semicircle that we made. There's really no rhyme or reason to it. I'm just staying within that zone and then bunches of little ones. Took them here, took them there. And then I'm going to go over it a little bit later with a darker one for Mermaid Tail. Think of it as like highlights and lowlights in your hair if you get that done. It gives it a little bit more depth and it doesn't all just look like one color. Alright, so now I have the bright green and on the bottom I am going to follow some sort of pattern. It's going to just do a V just like this. Middle down one side, back down the other, so that we're just doing a V pattern. All the way until we get to the end of the handle. Alright, back to the mermaid tail. I'm going to actually do a few top dots here under each S curl. I'm skipping every other bluegrass dot again. And then we'll also go around each of these elements with the mermaid tail. Okay, back to the mermaid tail again now for our handle. So you can see it's just a couple shades darker and I'm just kind of going in all the areas that I can see that I really have a blatant black background showing through.
And sometimes too I take a step back or I'll take a picture of it with my phone just to see from far away where I missed. And actually while I'm looking at the screen I can kind of tell here and on the other side there's a couple spots where the black is shining through. Shining, but showing through. And I just want to kind of tuck those in to cover that up. Okay, so I'm also going to tuck some larger circles of teal mint in between each of these almonds and then we'll do a couple rows of the teal mint and then we'll kind of section this area off. So let's see, same brush, but I did the bigger circle now I'm just doing littler circles, little dots, little dots, all around each of the teal mints. So now we're just going to, like I said, we're going to cordon this off. So I don't think you saw it on the video here, but I did just take a compass and quickly draw a circle around each of these so you could see some space in between the master part of the mandala and then have a little negative space and then start this white line. So I did that on all three petals, which for some reason on this faster version it's not showing up, but I did use a compass to just kind of give a guideline. If you can do it without a compass, that's obviously go to it. I just wanted my lines to be <laughs> um, symmetrical for these. And once you get this first one down, the ones after it are pretty easy to do. Alright, so this is just a quick stencil using cardstock. You just fold it in half, and then I measured about three inches large because that's going to fit my space, and then just drew like a little semicircle, a swirl, and a wave. And then when you open it up after you cut it, you get this. So you can try other little details and see what they make when you open them up, and that way you'll get a symmetrical shape. Obviously, you can do hearts, it's very easy to just make your own stencil. So that's all I did for here. And again, from here to here, I said it's about three inches out to my white line. And each one of these little sections is about an inch. So this is actually um, bluegrass green. I don't know why that said teal mint. And then I'm just filling in the space with a liner brush. The Arteza ones have longer bristles. It's just a little bit easier to drag the lines out gently. And then it just gives us a fun little different design to tuck in here to kind of accentuate our top section here and add a little to our mandala piece. So I'm just filling in now with the bluegrass. And these bristles are nice and soft too, so I just load it on the paint <laughs> and then fill it in nicely here. So hopefully I don't have to do more than one coat.
All right, now while that's drying, I'm just gonna finish up my other part of the white circle here. And that way you can, oh, I was just showing you could put a magnet down for your compass so you don't poke a hole through the PBO paint. But this way too, you can kind of see how the white helps tie all three sections of the shamrock together. And once we put the other lines on here as well, it'll kind of tie them all into the one piece. That's my Seppi saying hi. <laughs> if you actually want to hear him, you can go watch the long version. He just wanted to say hi to everybody. Okay, so now I'm using teal mint. And we're just following along the white with the teal mint using the same size dots. Okay, so next up is the bright green. And then I'm just going over the teal mint with that one. Okay, so now I'm using the teal mint and I'm just kind of highlighting our little element up here that we designed. So remember it was bluegrass, which is darker, and then the teal mint's a little bit lighter. So we're just going to do some little highlights along here with some dots and other brush strokes. This is still the teal mint. Just dotting down into the center of that V. This is bright green on either side, just a little bit larger dots. Some little ones at the bottom. And I'm just using the liner brush now with Dark Mermaid's Tail. back to the detailer with some little white dots.
one bright green swipe down the center of that and then a mermaid tail on either side and then we're using mermaid tail to kind of dot around the edge of the bottom part here Okay, let's do some bright green swipes here. And then the dark mermaid, or mermaid tail, a little darker. And back to the white with just a couple little dots here and there. Okay, I'm going to do another row up here of the teal mint. Alright, so now I'm going to take the mermaid tail No, I'm sorry, this is the bluegrass green You can see now how the rows are all kind of helping add to this mandala but you're not taking away from the central design then we're kind of filling in the outer section of the piece and I'm definitely thinking metallics at this time need to come into play <laughs> so we're gonna use a chocolate multi-surface metallic to give it some sparkle and then we'll put it probably around the outside and then at a couple aspects throughout the center of the mandala just to kind of bring that color throughout the whole piece. Okay, so I'll just finish up this side here. One thing is I didn't put a wet paper towel on my palette, which would have helped my paints not start to get tacky. If they stay more fluid, you don't have to re-dip as often. But if it starts to get sticky, you do. So it was just two rows of that blue grass at the end here. And then we're going to This is the mermaid tail, one last row of the mermaid tail.
All right, so now we're into the tasty chocolate part of the mandala. We're using that metallic now, and we're gonna use that all the way out to the edges. So all our last rows are gonna be in this chocolate metallic. And then at a couple points throughout the center of the mandala, we'll tuck a couple in there just to kind of bring that color back through the center of the piece. We'll put some along the sides of just our top section of the shamrock, just doing some swipes down each side. And then in between each of the elements that we did with the S curls, over the dot that doesn't have the top dot, we're going to put some chocolate. And then underneath each of these teal mint, just to kind of fill in that negative space under there. And then go back to our outer edge. Oh, you can see how nicely this fills in. Just the ends dipped with chocolate. A little bit of shine. And then I take a step back and look at the piece and see if I add a couple more little white dots here and there. Or just take a step back and look and see how that looks. I'm going to fill in here because I can see that blank space is bothering me with the spacing. So I'm going to give a little bright green and put spatial dots in between the bright green ones at the base of them. And fill in right there too. It's a little half dot just because when I got far away from it, I could tell that blank space was showing a lot. And then I think this just needs some kind of delicate swipe here. Maybe a couple at the bottom. Like I said, I just like to play around and see what I can add to a design to just kind of enhance it, fill in a little of that extra space, especially if I don't want to do it all dots. I like different designs mixed in with the dots. So 
there is our shamrock i hope you guys had so much fun i did and i look forward to doing another video with you guys soon these are the fast versions my regular versions are on miranda patron art and so these are the sped up ones and if you do like these then hit that subscribe button for seeing more when i post them have a great day